tonight on Destination. I had to come out because they represent the armed forces. You know, we do a lot of things over here. It's a big camera staring right in my face, so great face for radio I've got. Well, the, the parade has definitely gotten bigger. You can see that you have Indians and Cowboys and Blues Brothers. <laughs> everyone, thanks for joining us here tonight on Destinations. I'm your host, Kane Fairbaugh. For the last several weeks here on Destination, we've been following the NFL Europe, and particularly the Frankfurt Galaxy, on their road to the World Bowl. Last week we were in Barcelona, and this week, well, we're back here in Frankfurt for a game fit for the military. Our coverage tonight of Armed Forces Appreciation Day begins with a story on the opening ceremonies from Diane Adala. The Frankfurt Galaxy European National Football League team found a way to use American football as a means to help foster good German-American ties. The team honored American and German military members prior to kickoff during their home game against the Scottish Claymores. U.S. Army Europe support included helicopter static displays and singing of the American and German national anthems. Deputy Commander of the U.S. European Command, Marine General Carlton Fulford, Jr., performed the coin toss. It is so to be able to come place like this and share some of America's heritage in terms of American football with the German society and develop that close uh, relationship by sharing something that, that we bring to Germany, I think, is a unique opportunity. U.S. Army Europe's Deputy Commanding General, Lieutenant General Michael Dodson, says the support of the galaxy and of the German public is appreciated. You can tell that it's not only uh, that it comes naturally, but it's also heartfelt. German public support is at an all-time high, according to General Dieter Stockmann, Deputy Supreme Allied Commander Europe. Now, we'll never, ever uh, have such a situation that more than 70% of our public, of our society, is supporting actively, and they are doing the utmost in order to express our solidarity. Galaxy's general manager, Tillman Engel, says American football is fast becoming a tradition in Europe. So it's a natural thing to honor all the men and women in the armed forces of both the U.S. military and the German armed forces. And a football game of the Frankfurt Galaxy is a great opportunity to do that. And just like American football, a show of appreciation for the armed forces could become another tradition to look forward to every year with the continued support of the Frankfurt Galaxy football team. Reporting from the Vault Stadium in Frankfurt, Germany, Diana Dawa, USERA News. This is the second year in a row the Frankfurt Galaxy dedicated a game to the Armed Forces, and the American Forces Network was a big part of the pregame festivities. And Army Sergeant Dan Milbauer is here to tell us more about what happened off the field before the game even started, right, Dan? That's right, Kane. The Galaxy calls their big pregame shindig a power party. I was there along with AFN's local radio station and the USO party camper, but we weren't the only ones there. Not by a long shot. Despite the European preference for the game we call soccer, Germans do like our version of football. Although the weather was unpredictable, they came out in droves. Americans were there in force too, thanks to the USO and AFN publicity campaign. Big seeds and changes. Frankfurt AFN station Z98 broadcast live with special guests from American military commanders. American football being played in Germany. What a way to go. To sports heroes. Eddie George of the Tennessee Titans and Jerome Bettis of the Pittsburgh Steelers took time to chat on the air and sign autographs for eager German and American fans. Hey, George, AFN Frankfurt's Part in the Armed Forces Appreciation Day Power Party also included contests. The Galaxy cheerleaders helped. The Frankfurt Galaxy meant this day to show appreciation for the German and American militaries. Representatives of both helped out by showing off some of their equipment. We were having so much fun outside the stadium at the power party, we almost forgot there was a football game too. Inside, we caught up with some of the hundreds of Americans who turned out for this special game. It's all forces day. I'm really, really enjoying myself. You know, we, re we really don't have these type of things in Germany. But today, I heard about it, I had to come out because they represent the armed forces, you know. We do a lot of things over here and throughout the world. So I'm here to represent the armed forces on a day that we don't have to be in uniform. Yeah, I'm really excited about my first big game I've ever been to. Oh, I like it, man. I love the NFL. I watch the NFL all the time. 
Oh, I'm diehard football fan. I think it's great, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't see the NFL in the States because you're over here right now. Hey, you over here, NFL? I'm ready to go. I got my friends here. The people here that don't know me are here, you know, but they still they still welcoming me with open arms, so I'm really enjoying it. The game is, is out of control. It's just out of control. In the end, the home team did not disappoint. The Galaxy rocked the Scottish Claymores 16-9, a fitting end to another great Armed Forces Appreciation Day. Kane, I was at the Armed Forces Appreciation Day game last year, too, and this year it just seemed like it was even bigger. No doubt organizers from the Galaxy, as well as the U.S. and German militaries, are already getting together to start planning for next year. Well, actually, interesting you should say that, because the commissioner for the National Football League, Paul Tagliabu, is going to be here on the broadcast later on to tell us more about what we can expect in the future. So, interesting you should mention that. I look forward to that. All right, see you next year at Armed Forces Appreciation Day, Dan. Well, we here at the American Forces Network have been broadcasting since 1943, providing you with news and entertainment for almost 60 years. But believe it or not, we're not the only act in town. British forces stationed away from home have a similar service called BFBS, or the British Forces Broadcasting Service. Army Sergeant Doug Boyles takes us inside the BFBS studios at Shape, Belgium, and introduces us to two volunteer DJs that man the mic just for fun. At the stroke of four on Wednesday afternoons, BFBS Shape goes live. I'm the best karaoke singer going, especially after 10 pints of John Smith's. And the man behind the mic is volunteer DJ and loyal listener Graham Howard. I like music, any type of music, so BFBS plays a lot of music with a little bit of chat. Anyway, and for two hours on Wednesday afternoons, Graham's the one chatting. I was just going to lie to you and say I look a bit like Brad Pitt, but there's a big camera staring right in my face. So. Great face for radio I've got. And he's been doing this for five years now, from Cyprus to the Falklands. And then I was fortunate enough to come to Belgium. No, I mean it. BFBS also offers a live Monday show with volunteer DJ Louise Oliver. She says getting the hang of DJing is as easy as driving a car. You're probably going to get the hang of it because you eventually do all these things about thinking about it. So you'll be all right. And then you can talk complete rubbish. I mean, inter intellectual conversation. I'm sorry, what was my line again? I can't remember. Send us the stuff. Uh, information for the local area, that was it, and community. Army Sergeant Doug Boyles. A face like a smack backside he has. AFN News. It's on at 7 o'clock. It's the United States military personnel performing a live show with singing and dancing. I wondered what them vans were for when I seen them. Stay tuned to Destinations Cars coming up. From beginning to end, it takes about three months to create the entire bell. two years of your child's life is the optimum time for language development. Reading to your child for 15 minutes a day is a great way to develop your child's language skills. official U.S. Army Europe where leisure travel has never been so easy. Log on to www.sadotravel.com slash user and book your vacation or official travel via the net. No waiting, no lines. When there's a mission to accomplish, your time is essential. www.sadotravel.com slash user allows you to reserve leisure or official travel from anywhere in Europe 24 hours a day.
Armed Forces Appreciation Day with the Frankfurt Galaxy is just one way the National Football League is beefing up a relationship with the men and women in uniform. Milt Fitzwater is here in our studios tonight with the head of the NFL, Commissioner Paul Tagliabue. He's going to talk more about what we can expect in the future. Milt? Thank you very much, Kane. Our special guest is the Commissioner of the National Football League, Paul Tagliabue. Commissioner, the fans over here, male, female, are really looking forward to seeing NFL players coming over, paying a visit, getting autographs. Is that going to happen here in the future? Yes, it will. We are lucky this weekend to have uh, Jerome Bettis from the Steelers and Eddie George from the Titans, and we're working with other players and planning additional trips in the months ahead. So that'll happen, and uh, it's exciting for the players. It's educational for the players. It keeps the military over here on the front page, which is where they belong as long as they're on the front line. So we'll keep doing that. Commissioner, you've also made some tours and had a chance to meet some people here over the past week or two. Well, I was here about uh, three weeks ago and uh, visited uh, both the Army and Air Force uh, troops and uh, back here in the, in the last couple of days and visiting a lot more. So uh, it's important for me and for all, everyone in the league to understand what's going on with our forces who are doing such a phenomenal job. Well, on your tours and visiting the Americans, you also had a number of things to give them, so they have some memories here. Well, I was here about a month ago and um, met with some of the men and women and asked them if they had enough uh, equipment and flag football and kind of shirts and jerseys that you need. And I could sense that uh, we could do more. So I told them then that we would uh, come back and uh, bring with us a lot of gear. And our people were able to move quickly. And I think we brought enough gear over here to outfit about 10,000 players at different levels from, you know, children through... Uh, junior high, high school, and then uh, men and women in the service. Uh, so uh, there should be a lot of football. I know there are over 600 teams here in the military. So uh, hopefully they can uh, throw around some more footballs and get a little more time on the football field. When it comes to the National Football League Europe, it's had its ups and downs. It's had some successes here. How do you see that? Is it a development league? Is it a league to bring some players over to get in shape after injuries? Is it a way to find new players? How do you see the league? Well, we see it in about... Uh, at least two maybe three different ways first of all it's to uh, respond to the interest uh, in our game here and to bring the game close up to the fans so they don't just have to settle for television uh, secondly it gives us a platform for working with young uh, Europeans and getting them playing the game with whether it's flag football or tackle football and the third thing is it gives our players a chance to play uh, at a level it's between uh, great college football and the NFL so it's uh, really good quality and we call it NFL Europe because it's NFL quality football and a lot of these guys as you know will go on to play for NFL teams in the Super Bowl this year we had 14 alumni from NFL Europe playing uh, on the Patriots and the Rams so that I think is a positive statement about what's going on over here on the in the game right now the NFL Europe is in Central Europe pretty much we have a lot of Americans in Italy and other countries around Europe uh, do you anticipate any chance there'll be some expansion so more Americans can see this kind of game well, we're looking at expansion. We've done some pretty uh, in-depth studies of different areas. Uh, we've looked at Madrid. I was in Madrid last year. We've looked at a number of different cities in France, uh, some other cities in Germany, northern Italy. Uh, and then we have to look probably at Eastern Europe, maybe a city like Warsaw at some point. So we hope to be able to expand the league, but we want to make sure the existing foundation is really solid before we bite off any more. One final question. We've had behind us already a very successful Armed Forces game in Frankfurt. Uh, do you anticipate something like this in the future, another type of day like this? I would think so. It's uh, important for us. I know it's uh, important for the Galaxy and for the players to come over to know that there is an event like this on the schedule. And we've had a lot of positive feedback from the men and women that we've met in the armed services here. So it's another thing we'll keep on our, on our list of things to do. Commissioner, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Here's a look at some of the stories next week on Destinations. It's really tough to get the hang of and get in rhythm. There are some Fred Astaire's up here, but I feel like more of a Fred Flintstone. At first glance, it appears very simple. Hit your opponent without getting hit yourself. Get real. Get together with youth services. I need a passport. 
Why is that? First grade is way too stressful, so I'm running away to Rio. Well, you're going to need both your parents' permission. Can't we just ask my dad? Mom wouldn't understand. Sorry, but minors under the age of 14 must show consent from both parents before they can get a U.S. passport. Oh. Don't worry. Just have your parents log on to travel.state.gov. Travel.state.gov. Thanks. Nurturing quality care with certified providers. Flexible care options. Make FCC your first choice. Contact your CYS office. When you think of parades, most people imagine gigantic balloons floating through the streets or the local football team being hauled down Main Street on a flatbed trailer for homecoming. If you're American, fest tents and bratwurst aren't the first things that come to mind, but that's what it was for the Western Day Parade, and specialist Russ Zill takes us there. It's not Thanksgiving, and this isn't the Macy's Day Parade. It's the fifth annual Ginheim Western Parade. These participants walked, drove, or rode through the streets of this Frankfurt suburb, transforming two kilometers of German soil into any town USA for one sunny Saturday afternoon. It's really uh, refreshing, especially I'm from Tennessee, so I, I like that Western culture myself, but it's really a reflection of, of Germans and, and what they feel about America and I think our friendship, German-American friendship. started in 1998, the parade has grown by leaps and bounds. Well, the, the parade has definitely gotten bigger. You can see that you have Indians and Cowboys and Blues Brothers and bands and cheerleaders, and every year it's gotten bigger. Now they have, this year, 670 participants, and that's mainly Germans, but there are some Americans. And when all was said and done, in true country fashion, these parade participants rode off into the sunset only to return next year. Reporting from Frankfurt, Germany, I'm Specialist Russell Zill, AFN News. While Western Day parades aren't something you usually see in a European town, church bells are. Air Force Sergeant Gary Piccarello takes us now to a small town in southern Italy, where they've been making those bells for several generations. The small town of Agnone sits nestled among rolling hills and mountains about two hours north of Naples. It is a typical small town, except for one thing. The town is famous for its bells. From beginning to end, it takes about three months to create the entire bell. But for the Marinelli family, they've been doing this work for an entire generation. They've been making bells in this town at the Marinelli Bell Factory for ages. Father passing the technique on to son and so on and so on until the years just blur together. The latest patriarch of the Bell Works, Pasquale Marinelli, is 84 years old and has been involved with every facet of this unique work of art. There are three components to producing a bell. The first is the mind, to come up with the concept. The second are the hands. You need strong hands to do the work. And finally, heart, the need to believe in what you're doing. Marinelli bells are ringing all over the world, from the Vatican in Rome to St. Peter's Square in Moscow, from New York to China. The process of making a bell has changed very little over the course of time. A bell prototype representing the interior and exterior is produced. This false bell, as it's called, is covered with layers of clay and then smoothed. And on this surface go wax relief sculptures of specific designs needed for the bell. The sculpture can be as simple as a form of calligraphy or as complex as this scene of the Madonna. Many times the designs are original. Other times I copy them from existing paintings or drawings. Regardless of the size, it takes about three months for the bell to be completed. The alloy for the bell is a combination of 78 parts copper and 22 parts tin. The temperature for casting, about 1200 degrees. The crucial elements to obtain well-made, good-sounding bells depend on the alloy, the thickness, the diameter, the weight, and the height. Qualsiasi cosa ti si presenta, sia grande, sia piccola, tu la devi affrontare. 
Every detail is important. There is no one thing that outweighs the other when it comes to casting and producing a bell. The foundry depends on the skills of 20 craftsmen to produce the bells. Most of these individuals, with few exception, are family, carrying on a tradition that shows no sign of ending. I've always said to make a good bell is a, a passion. That's what it is, a, a passion that has completely taken over my life. But that same passion has given me the satisfaction to live and to carry on. The sound of these bells, they'll keep ringing long after I'm gone. Reporting from the town of Agnone at the Marinelli Bell Factory, I'm Air Force Sergeant Gary Piccarillo, AFN News. That wraps up another edition of Destinations this week. If you've got a great idea for us and would like us to cover a story near you, all you have to do is drop us an email. That email is destinations at afn.frankfurt.army.mil. We'd love to hear from you. We leave you now with some more sights and sounds from Armed Forces Appreciation Day with the NFL Europe's Frankfurt Galaxy. Take care, we'll see you back here next week. That's what I'm going to do from the 5th person in mind. Off front. That's you from the stand side. Here we go. And... Mahoo.